Welcome to this quick start guide for DaVinci Resolve 18.5. And in this video, we're gonna to try to cover as much as we can in as quick as time as possible for newbies to beginning working with this application. And by default, when we launch the application and leave the project manager, we're on the cut page. But let's go ahead and hop over to the media and we're gonna quickly take a second to talk about each of the seven pages below. And then we're gonna spend the bulk of our time on the edit page. So our media page is the primary page for importing and organizing our media, whether it's video files, audio, or images. We then have our cut page, and this is focused on providing the tools you need for fast editing and experimenting with multiple arrangements of a scene or fast assembly edits. We then have our edit page, and this is similar to any traditional NLE and provides an environment for editing and arranging our video, audio, images, etc. If you're just getting started, you can pretty much accomplish all that you need to do for a project here, even if you're a seasoned user. We next have our fusion page, and this allows us to experiment with and create our visual effects and motion graphics. And we next have the color page, and this is for our color correction and grading. And Fairlight is essentially an entire DAW within Resolve or Digital Audio Workstation, and this allows us to mix and edit our audio and add various audio effects. And then finally, we have our Deliver page, and this allows us to choose our render settings and export our completed project. Now, all of these pages are tied together, so at any time you can switch between them, and they share the same timeline, and wherever you have your playhead positioned, it's gonna be the same for any of these pages. So this is very convenient. But for the remainder of the tutorial, let's go ahead and switch back over to the edit page and get started here. Now, one of the very first things that, that I wanna mention is that if you're coming from another NLE like Premiere or Final Cut, just know that if we come to the top left corner, we can come to the DaVinci Resolve. We have keyboard customization. And if you would rather not learn a whole new set of keyboard shortcuts, just know that in the top right corner of this window, we can click on that down arrow and then choose Premiere Pro, Final Cut, Avid, Pro Tools, etc. And you can use the keyboard shortcuts for these applications within Resolve. We can also choose our various actions. We can perform a search. I'll just select this here. Then we have a field and we can input our own custom keyboard shortcuts here, save those. So you do have that option as well, but we'll go ahead and close that out. And let's just quickly get a lay of the land here. We have a couple of viewers at the top. This is our source viewer and our timeline viewer. On the left-hand side, we have a panel here, which is our media pool. And if what you're seeing looks a little bit different, you can come to the workspace up at the top and then choose reset UI, UI layout, just to be sure that we're all seeing the same thing. You can enter into full screen by clicking here. Now again, by default, we're gonna see our media pool and it's expanded out to its full height, but we have a button where we can shrink that and give us a bit more real estate in our timeline. We can also choose to see effects, index, or our sound library. But we'll come back to the media pool. Now over on the right-hand side, we can have a panel here, just the same as here, but this is going to be for our metadata or the inspector. And we also have this button where we can expand that out. Once this is expanded out, we can actually see two panels at the same time. So our metadata and our inspector are here, but I'll go ahead and collapse this back and let's hide that for the moment. And one of the first things that we'll wanna do is get some media into our project. And we can go about that by right clicking in our media pool. And then towards the center, we have import media. We can also use control I. So I'll go ahead and select that. And then here on my desktop, I have a folder that I created for this tutorial with some media in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click to select everything. Let's choose open. And then those items are populated within our media pool. And I'm actually going to go ahead and click this button to shrink this panel. Now, once we've got our files imported, we can hover and then live preview these within our source viewer window. You'll notice that that, that disappears once I stop hovering on these items, we can audition our audio, and we do have sound that plays back as we scrub through. If you'd prefer not to have that, you can press Shift and S, and then you won't hear that audio. So I'll go ahead and do that now. 
Okay, so we can still have a live preview without that audio. If you'd like for these to stick and stay, instead of going away after you move away from hovering, you can double click and then we can make use of transport controls to preview these items. We also have a scrubber control that we can use to scrub through. Now, as with any NLE, we can just click, hold, and drag one of these items down and create our timeline. And you can see we have two tracks that are created, our video one and audio one. We can click once to rename within this field. If we'd like to zoom within our timeline, we can hold down Alt and then use our mouse wheel to zoom in and out. We also have some zoom controls up here. So this first one is full extent. And when we have this engaged, it's going to show all of our clips at one time. So if I were to bring in another clip and just drag that to the end here, then you'll see that this automatically zooms out to include this second clip as well. Now let's double click on this other item here to populate our source viewer window, because I just want to show that we can also click, hold and drag this. And then we have some overlays that pop up in our source viewer. And then we can choose from one of these different options to add this clip to our timeline. So for instance, if I choose a pen to end, then it's going to add it to the very end of that second clip within our timeline. When I hover back in the source viewer, notice that we have these overlays also, the film strip and the waveform. So if you just like the video portion of the file, then you can grab this and that's just gonna bring in the video. If you just want the audio, you can grab this and that will bring in just the audio. I'll just do that just so you can see, pull that directly into the timeline. If we'd like to remove, we can click once to highlight that and then I'll backspace. Now, of course, we can come to the beginning or end of any of our clips and adjust its length. And then here at the top of our timeline, we have some tools. By default, this is going to be on our selection mode. But if I click here, our trim edit mode, this is going to allow us to change the length of our clips and ripple edit all of the clips that follow. So if I hover on the edge of this first clip, I can pull this in and you can see that that's going to pull in all of the other clips that follow. Alternatively, if I want to extend this clip, I can click, hold and drag, and it will push the following clips out in the timeline. And again, we're on that full extent zoom, so it's automatically going to adjust what we're seeing here to include all of the clips within our timeline. If we'd like to adjust different settings and parameters for our video or audio, let's go ahead and bring back the selection mode here. We can click this and then open up our inspector. And then we have a bunch of different parameters that we can adjust. Let's switch to the video. So we have transform controls and let's position our playhead over this clip. So if we'd like to say zoom, for instance, we can click here and then hover and then adjust our zoom like so. Anytime that we'd like to reset our parameters, we can double click on the word the name of the parameter or on this reset button here, and that will reset our zoom. Now, if we switch to the audio, we'll be working with parameters for the audio portion of this clip. We can adjust its volume, its panning. We have a dialogue lever, leveler, we can adjust its pitch, and we have an equalizer. And of course, we have more extensive audio controls on our Fairlight page. If we'd like to split our clips, then we can position our playhead wherever we'd like to do that and then press Control B. That's the default shortcut, although I've changed mine to S, but we can simply move our playhead and then make our cuts very quickly. If we'd like to remove one of these clips, we can just highlight it and then press Backspace. And you notice that we have a space here. If I click once to be sure that we highlight that, I can also Backspace and then that will ripple edit and pull our following clips forward. Now, by default, our clips will snap. So as I move this to the other one, you can see that that snaps like so. But if you would ever like to make more precise adjustments, we can come to the snap and then turn that off. And then that's going to disable the snap here and just allow us more fine control. If we pull this in, it's actually going to cut that previous clip. So if I release that and then pull back, you can see that that's been trimmed automatically. Let's turn our snap back on and pull this forward. And if you notice, if I select the video portion of this clip and pull this in, the audio is going to move along with it, but we can also unlink these clips. So let's highlight that. 
right click. And then at the bottom we have link clips, we can disengage. And then I can adjust, say the audio. Let's click on something else and come back to that. I can adjust the audio by itself. Let's control Z to undo that. Select the video, hold shift, select our audio, right click, and then we can relink those. Another cool feature is that within our viewer, we can actually click on this button here to view our transform controls. They tie in with the controls here, but if you'd prefer to work visually within the viewer, let's mouse wheel to zoom out a bit. We can click, hold, and drag to zoom this in or out. Let's go ahead and reset that by double clicking. We can also click on the down arrow to switch to cropping. We can adjust that. We can add dynamic zoom, which is gonna allow us to create zooms in a matter of seconds. We'll come back to the transform and then click once to turn that off. Now we've seen that we can hold alt and use our mouse wheel to zoom in and out within the timeline. If we hold shift and use the mouse wheel, then we can zoom in vertically for our video clip or for the audio. We can also come over to our track headers and just hover at the bottom of our track and adjust their height like so. And this center line is going to allow us to adjust the position of our video and audio. We have some timeline view options here. So when we click on this, we have a couple of different options. We can see subtitle tracks, our audio waveforms, we can hide that, our view options. So by default, this is gonna be on a film strip view where we see thumbnails throughout the clip. We can also change that to thumbnails at the beginning and end of our clip or no thumbnails at all. We have some audio view options and we can adjust our track heights here as well. And this will adjust all video and audio clips within our timeline, even if there's more than just these couple of tracks. Now let's hold Alt and use our mouse wheel again to zoom out a bit. And I'm gonna place the cursor here. Let's pull this in a bit. I'm gonna select this empty space, press backspace to remove that, just to show that we can add transitions by coming to our effects and then choosing video transitions. So we have additive dissolve here, and this is gonna give us a preview in our timeline viewer of what that particular transition is gonna look like. So we can click, hold, and drag that to this point where we have our cut. Let's zoom in. And we can see that that's been added and we can adjust the length of that additive dissolve. Let's play that back. If you'd like to remove, we can just be sure that that's highlighted with a red frame and press backspace. And I'll go ahead and add a cross dissolve just to show that we can, beyond hovering at the edge to adjust its length, we can come over to our inspector and we see we have our transition and we have some parameters that we can adjust for it over here as well. We also have audio transitions so we can create a crossfade for it by dragging that there. Let's go ahead and remove these out with backspace. And I just wanna show that if we hold Alt and Shift, I can then click, hold, and drag and create an automatic crossfade for these clips. If we'd like to add text, then we can come to our titles. Here we have text and text plus. Text plus is going to give you a bit more fancy text that will have movements and 3D options, but we'll stick with the basic text for now. Let's click, hold, and drag. I'll just place that where our cursor is. And we can see we have basic title. Let's click once to select that generated text. Now we have a text field and we can enter new text here. And we can choose the font family. As I hover, you can see that we're gonna have a dynamic display to give us a preview of what we're working with. We'll just choose anything. We can change its size by clicking here. We have other options for tracking, line spacing, font style, so on. Anytime that we'd like to reset the changes that we've made here, we can do so individually for each parameter with this reset button, or we can reset everything with this one at the very top. And that's gonna take it back to as it was. 
with our original font and size, etc. We also have some generators that we can make use of, so by clicking here, we can access those. We have effects. And if you'd like to add effects to your audio, just come to the audio effects. We have our Fairlight effects. So if you wanted to add something like a reverb, we can scroll down and we have that here. We can click, hold and drag and add that to our clip. Now, of course, you'll want to split the clip. This is our reverb that we've added and we can adjust its parameters. Now, of course, typically you'll want to split the clip that you want to add the reverb to unless you would like to add it to the entire clip here. The edit page also has a mixer available to us that we can make use of for adjusting our audio levels. This is our main out and this is our audio track here. We'll go ahead and close that back and we could keep on going but in the name of keeping this into a quick start video we're going to go ahead and start to wrap up. Just know that once you've finished editing your project and arranging it you can come up to the quick export here in the top right hand corner clicking on that. We can then choose from a variety of presets, whether it's YouTube, Vimeo, Twitter, TikTok, etc. We can cancel out of there and then let's make our way to the deliver page just to show that we have a bit more flexibility here. By default, we're on a custom export where we can have fine control over different parameters for exporting, such as our resolution, the format, the codec choosing the name for our exported file, the location where we're going to send it to. Let's go ahead and select our desktop. Let's choose save. We'll call this tutorial. And we'll actually choose one of the presets up above. You can see we have H.264, 65. We've got YouTube. Let's go ahead and select that. We can choose with the down arrow the resolution. We'll leave that on 1080p. Our frame rate is here. And then we can choose to add this to our render queue. And you'll see that that populates in our queue here. And then all we need to do is click on the render all. And then that's going to begin. And then we have a progress status here. That's going to give us a readout of the amount of time that it has left. Up here at the top, we can see 29 minutes remaining. If we'd like to cancel, we can just click on stop. So again, we could keep on going on. There's a million different features. There's a million different possibilities within Resolve 18.5, but this is a quick start video. So we're going to try to wrap up here. I hope that I covered enough to help get you guys going. And I thank you for watching. Check out my channel for more in-depth tutorials. And I hope to see you in the next tutorial.